morning, good evening, good afternoon to you, wherever you might be in the world today. Thank you for joining me. Of course, um, hopefully you're aware that I'm Anna and of course this is my channel and I put together content that I hope will be interesting for people that uh, might benefit them. Just sharing the information, sharing the love and looking for people to respond and tell me their stories as well and then we can talk about them together. So today I've actually got a few things that I... I'm going to do as far as the storytelling goes I'm going to respond to a comment uh, that was put onto one of the videos today and I'm also going to share a story because I've had a bit of an experience this week positive one I like to think um, and there's so much out there that's not positive if we want to lock in on that kind of information we could do it on another channel hopefully we'll have some uplifting stuff here but anyway just a reminder for those people new and old to the channel that I put timestamps in the video so you can just jump from one section to the next if, in case um, the videos get long or if it's a bit boring or if there's a subject that you're interested in you're interested in one part of it but not necessarily the other you can just jump around from um, one part of the video to the next or if you find a video that has some interesting content on there and you want to return to it later at least you should be able to find it with ease but anyway um, I have had an interesting week but I'm not going to talk too much about what's happened through the week because I've got a lot to cover first so let's get into it so first things first I'm reintroducing the chitter chatter slide this week and this is because I've had a comment by Mr Nobody um, so this is to you but it might be relevant to other people as well so his name is 15 Mr Nobody and he wrote his comment on the video that I've loaded for the Angel Fanuel. So um, I might put that into the description if I remember to do it. Okay. So anyway, where I'm going with this is Mr. Nobody um, made a comment under this video because the angel name was given to him by one of his children. So what Mr. I'll, I'll read the comment out. So Mr. Nobody says, I'm a Catholic school kid. I'm not super devout anymore. And that he and his mother had... Um, some kind of gift or intuition he believes and just so that you know other people that might be listening as well I'm the same I was brought up actually uh, quite a devout Catholic an extreme Catholic family I believe um, and in my situation it was more a case of my mother I found this out as an adult actually way down the track I asked my mother why on earth we had to go to church as much as what she did because she obviously um, once all of us kids moved out of home, she didn't go as regularly, shall we say. But when we were growing up, you know, it was church on Sunday, it was church on Saturday. It was if the church needed help, if the priest needed help, if the nuns needed help, if the Catholic schools couldn't afford to pay for a cleaner, it was all mum would mum's kids would be there. Anyway, it turned out that mum had made a promise to God uh, because, because there'd been a bit of infant mortality in the town. And um, she'd said, what she told me was that she'd made a promise to God that if her baby was born living, she would make sure that all of her children went to church every week. And she certainly did, um, up until I left home anyway. But to be clear, I don't identify as a Catholic. And this is, I'm just going to put a little disclaimer in here. It's taking me um, down a warrant. Look. As far as I'm concerned, all churches have got a few horror stories involved with them these days and the way they've treated their um, parishioners and this kind of stuff. There's like um, a black cloud over a lot of them. But from the perspective of people as Catholics or churchgoers, I don't judge them all badly. And I have had to interact with some of them, although I'm not a Catholic and or churchgoer now, I did have to do a Catholic field placement as part of my social work degree and it wasn't that you've got to go to a Catholic one, it's just where I ended up with my field placement and I was able to interact with um, Catholics, with the priests, with the nuns and this kind of thing as a mature age person and have some respect for them I guess, you know, not everybody's bad, they might be in these situations but some of them are just really good people being impacted negatively by what's going on around them but anyway i'm going to move on from that just suffice to say i support people um, to express their faith in whatever way they feel comfortable um, anyway so back to mr nobody i'm just going to call you mr nobody from here he said that he's been sharing biblical stories with his nine-year-old daughter um, 
and what would I say? So clearly he's a Christian, even if he's not identifying as a Catholic so much himself now. Um, anyway, his four-year-old son comes in and enters the conversation and in the process he informed his father that angels are coming and visiting him. And the four-year-old actually gave him the name of the angel Fanuel, which Mr. Nobody had never heard of an angel called Fanuel before, which is how he came to find the video that I've loaded on the channel. Um, the little kitty, by the way, I find this absolutely beautiful, has mentioned also that Fanuel has two names. This is what the kid has relayed. Sorry, that probably sounds terrible. I'm being very Australian. I'm going to stick with the way I talk. Okay, so the little kitty has said that Faniel's got two names and that one of the angel's names is Uriel. And my first thoughts about this was it's absolutely beautiful. It's lovely. Um, children teach us so much. They are our best teachers. And certainly when my children were young, I learned a lot from them about the spiritual realm and spirit angels and so forth and also with other people. Now, I just want to say before I go into my stories about some of them, I can't tell you all of them, there was a lot of them. Um, in regard to the information that the little boy has given about Faneuil and having two names, I would say that's not my understanding, but that's not a case of being right or wrong. To me, it could be that maybe he is right. Maybe Faneuil does identify with two names um, and they maybe they represent two aspects of healing, um, energy and power and that kind of thing. Um, I am aware that the angel Ramil, which some people spell R-E-M-E-I-L, and then other people spell R-U-M-E-I-L, double e l some people think that's purely just about the spelling of the name but if you look at the um, energy and power and attributes that are given to the spelling variation there's a little bit of a variation in what their task might be but what i was really interested to find was that ramil is actually the shortened name of um, the archangel jeremiel and once you look at Jeremiel's purpose and function, you actually see how the Ramiel's names uh, relate to Jeremiel as well. So where I'm going with that is I think um, it's my belief, listen to what the kids say and don't form a judgment, ask your own guidance, you know, and come to your own conclusions because what is right for you is not necessarily right for everybody else. But anyway, I've gone off a little bit, okay? So Mr. Nobody said that he wasn't sure if um, his child had found the information about Faneuil on the TV and thought it was possible. Well, my response to that is I really don't think so because you've made the point yourself as an adult, you've never seen the name Faneuil. I know as an adult, um, I found the name Faneuil. Same with Uriel. I hadn't heard of either of these angels and still I, until I started doing studying of angels. They're just not really out there, you know, like most people have heard of uh, if he'd said the names Michael or Raphael um, or even Gabriel, then I might think that perhaps the child has heard it somewhere, but not with names like Fanuel and Uriel. Once again, I've digressed though, so I'm just going to quickly say here before I go on to the next slide that there is a variation, uh, Mr. Nobody, between you and I, and that is that you're actually having conversations with your children about religion and faith and the Bible. With my situations, I actually didn't have those conversations. And um, that doesn't mean to say that I didn't expose my children to faith or to religion. What that means is that I chose um, not to get them baptised. So people out there might be having a gasp. I struggled to find a religion where I felt that I wanted to baptise them. And by that, I mean not just religion, I mean um, you know, there's variations within the Christian churches as well. And so I decided that I would leave it to my children to decide as adults if they wanted to be baptised and where they wanted to be baptised because my belief is um, one that God is not going to turn his back on um, a person that's got a loving, good character. But that's my belief, okay? I understand and respect other people have got different beliefs. Um, so there was a couple of reasons why once I started to have my spiritual connection occur that I didn't talk to my kids about it and part of it also was my fear. Okay, my fear was I was a single mother at the time I'd split up. It was a nasty divorce 
And I was concerned that if I started talking about the spiritual occurrences um, and involving my children in it, that I might lose custody of my children. So I was very, very cautious. And instead of prompting my children to have thoughts, I just listened. I became a listener and I listened to the things that they would tell me. Now, just for your information, um, age four is not too young. What I learned over a period of time, because I met lots of I went through a stage of meeting a lot of women mothers with young children and the the children would just say the most amazing things and i have known children aged two or three that can actually speak of spiritual stuff as well so it was put to me anyway that with children the beauty of children is that quite often they come in um you will have heard of the veil okay which is um, the third eye, if you like. Some people say that the psychic vision, the clairs, they're closed down. That's said to be that the veil hasn't been lifted is when we don't have the third eye open. Now, my understanding and based on my experiences, interactions with these other mothers, is that some children are born and that veil is lifted and their psychic vision is still wide open. The, their um, clairs, if you like, they are unimpinged and they haven't lived long enough to be told or to understand or think that what they're doing or saying is non-conventional they haven't been told to be silly you know that what they're doing or saying is silly and um so for my children when they started talking i didn't shut them down because i grew up in a family where as we said we being catholic um, it was not considered to be acceptable to have these visions. And in fact, it was terrifying um, for my parents um, to even contemplate. And I wasn't the only one in my family, by the way. My brother also had invisible friends and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't like seeing, um, because I've got the mental health background, um, I saw something the other day where it was said that a child had a schizophrenia diagnosis at the age of eight. It's like, yeah, I'm really... It's just easier to label them with a mental health illness, isn't it, um, than actually acknowledge that there might be something to what they're saying. And for me, what I did was I allowed my children to speak and tell me what they were seeing or hearing or feeling. And from there, I was able to unpack it with them. Sometimes I had to have conversations with them um, that were spiritual. And this is why I've got the Ten Commandments up here. There's a reason for this. I'll go into this in a minute because this relates to my daughter and a message from her. So what happened for me, I was in the early days of conscious uh, development of my gifts, shall we say, you know. Before then, I'd probably been doing the victim of life stuff where, you know, oh, I had a dream, I saw the most awful thing, and I did see some really awful things in my dreams, um, plane crashes where entire, you know, hundreds of people being killed, that kind of stuff. It wasn't the stuff that I liked to see, I can assure you. Um, but I was learning at this particular stage how to control my gifts and I was becoming quite awestruck by some of the visions and some of the experiences that I was having. This was at a time in my life, I might add, where I was actually meditating about three hours every night. So there was a lot of very fast and rapid paced development that happened for me. And we're talking about back in the year 2000. And so to put this into perspective, my eldest daughter would have been nearly 10, maybe. The next daughter would have been nine and my son would have been seven. And at this particular time, so this is where we come into the story. Yes, they're a little bit older along, but um, where this story is related. But I think people will understand when you get given this kind of story, when you hear these kind of things, there is absolutely no doubt that the messages that the children are giving to us is true. They can't be fabricated. So in this regard, we're talking about my second daughter. Okay, she was nine. She should have been able to read well. She actually didn't. She was um, my problem child. Sorry, I'm going to put it out there. She was really strong willed so this is why she was my problem child not that she was a problem child but she certainly had me running laps and um, she was a non-sleeper she had a really distorted circadian rhythm um, when it came to things like school 
she just wouldn't apply herself. If she was interested in something, she could spout to you the um, spawning properties of a coral polyp. But if you asked her to read a book, she actually couldn't read most of the time. She would stumble over her words and um, she'd have to spell it out. And I would need to spend time with her. She just seemed to, um, because the school would be saying, don't push her, you can't get her to the point of disliking school. School shouldn't be difficult and horrible and an unpleasant experience. She will learn and grow at her own rate. You know, this is what the school's telling me. I'm not sure that it was a good um good advice at the end of the day but but she would eventually I'd give her some tutoring and she would come good again but at this particular time in her life her reading was actually pretty appalling and the reason I make mention of this is because she'd gone to bed as usual playing up at bedtime sent her off to bed and she comes out with a face like thunder and hands on her hips and she turns around and she says I can't sleep and I said oh no as you do like oh why not she said there's a man in my bedroom I thought, oh, good lordy, what have I done to deserve this? I've gone, oh, okay, as you do, trying not to feign, you know, keep the face calm and non-expressive. It's like, oh, okay, a man in your bedroom. She goes, yeah. So I've got up and I've walked into the bedroom. I'm like, hmm, I'm not seeing any. Now, I'd been speculating, was she clairvoyant anyway before this because there'd been a couple of other things happening. And um, so I said to her, right, so there's a man here. I said, I can't see him. I said, what does he look like? And she said, he's wearing jeans and an orange T-shirt. See, these are how the memories get embedded. I can relay this like it happened yesterday. And I've gone, oh, okay then. And I said, well, you know, did the whole check out the room type stuff. And then said, well, okay, you need to go to bed. I can't see him. I'm going to go back and meditate in the lounge room. So I've gone back to the lounge room. She's come back out. A little later, she said, what are you going to do about this, Mum? She said, he won't keep quiet, right? He keeps talking to me. So I'm not a particularly patient person. That was something I had to learn. So I basically turned around and said to her, well, can't you just tell him to shut up? And she was like, no, um, I have, and he's not listening. So I go, okie dokie. I said, well, go back then and ask him if he's your guide, right? I mean, I'd never had a conversation with my daughter about a guide or what a guide was, but I thought, well, he doesn't have feathers, so, you know, he can't be an angel, he's got to be a guide. So she's come back out and she said to me, he said, yes, he is, right? It was, in hindsight, a hilarious situation because I'm in the lounge room, she's coming out. He said, yes, he is. And I said, well, then ask him, does he have a message for you? Oh, right, so back around she goes, walks back into the bedroom, do you have a message? And she comes back out and she said, um, yes, he did. He said he's got a message for me. And I said, well, okay, what's his message? And she put her hand up in front of her face. She was a snaky little thing. And um, anyway, I said, why are you looking at your hand? And she said, because it's got writing on it. I said, it's got writing on it, has it? And she said, yes. And I said, well, then read it out to me. So I sat through this arduous, tortured, the, 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 the p -p -p power, the p -p power, uh, and woo, 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 what? And I've looked at her, I thought, now I'm getting frustrated. I've looked at her and I said, um, hmm, I thought I knew what this word is, but I needed to get her to spell it. I said, spell it, just spell it. So she spelled it out to me. Um, because she said the power and the wisdom. I said, spell it, Hannah. Actually, I just told you her name. Whoops. I said, spell it, please. And she said, um, you know, spelled it out and it was wisdom. And I said, okay, that's wisdom. I said, what else does it say? She said, it says the power and the wisdom are in you. Right. And I said, is that right? And I said, so how's he written it? Well, she, with her finger, what she did was she actually drew the outline, the two tablets that we have here in this image, the Ten Commandments. She actually outlined them and then I got her to draw the picture um, of what it said as well and write down what she had on her hand that was obviously invisible. And I thought there's no way, absolutely no way that she has picked that up from anywhere. Um, this has to have been channeled. And so then I said to her, all right, I said, well, he's given you a message now. Just say thank you very much to him and good night. And um, ask, as she was walking off, though, I said, oh, actually, do you know what, Hannah? I said, you should ask him if he's got any more messages for you. 
and she stopped and oh her face looked like thunder she really was not a happy camper just turned around she's looked at me she goes yes he does I said all right then well what is it she said listen to your mother your mother knows best I went oh what a nice guide he is as you do I thought oh I like that one he can come back again so anyway that was the story of my daughter um if you want me to talk more about these kind of scenarios I'm more than happy to but I really would like to hear about other people's experiences as well it just makes my heart feel you know what I mean it just becomes so joyous the children are wonderful and when they start talking about angels they are amazing I've got so many more stories I can't share them all today it's already getting too long I want to actually acknowledge before I go today somebody who is very very special to me in my life and the person I want to acknowledge today is a guy by the name of Stan and a beautiful person absolutely beautiful soul um, I haven't been in touch with him for quite a while and I learned the other day that he passed to the other side um, and this is quite interesting because we used to have a very strong connection now I'm sure other people have been through this as well as that we form close bonds with people throughout the passage of our life and then we come to a fork in the road and we take different paths now when it comes to Stan and I'm not going to say his surname because I find it very interesting that he has passed away and I've not seen any notices or any big fanfare about his passing he's just passed quietly away and so I want to respect that um, aspect of him as well but anyway I have thought of him on and off actually for most of the year and considered going and catching up with him and, and then thinking you know maybe not maybe not because our life had taken these different trajectories and one of them was the fact that he actually had got into a relationship and I don't know if he ended up being married getting married or whatever Stan and I never had that kind of relationship we just had a really beautiful healthy relationship and I don't know that I actually spoke to him after um, he was he was diagnosed with cancer some time ago and he was being wheeled into surgery as it happens I didn't know that I hadn't uh, there'd been a gap within our friendship as well because he was in this relationship and then this particular day as it happens it was my inner guidance was saying contact him and I gave him a call and it turns out he was in the pre-op before he went in for surgery for the cancer the cancer had flared up but anyway where I'm going with this is um, I just want to honor his memory and do some kind of tribute for him even though you guys don't know him um, just acknowledge how much he meant to me and the appreciation I have for him for his contributions to my own life um, am I sorry that I didn't get to catch up with him before he passed I actually think in hindsight it's perfect because my memories of of Stan will remain with him in pretty good health even after he was diagnosed he um, he seemed to be in reasonably good health despite the fact that um, he was battling cancer he hadn't got to that really diminished stage so when I think of Stan I think of him at his peak I guess as um, opposed to being at his vulnerable but anyway getting back to Stan he was a man and I mean a man he was very spiritual yes but he could also be very masculine he could be very abrupt um, he didn't have a filter sometimes some of the things that fell out of his mouth uh, he would really shock people um, he could be very judgmental about people as well you know because actually at the end of the day being we talk about being spiritual as though you know to be a spiritual person you have to be this perfect holy person that's walking around with a halo you know and and without human flaws and all the rest of it well he was a man he was humanly flawed you know we used to make jokes that you know we would aspire to have a halo except that it would probably choke us around our neck you know this kind of thing um so he was very human um he had aspects of himself you know nobody can be liked by everybody I know that there were people that probably didn't take well to who and what Stan was but from where I sit 
he was a beautiful man. He was magnanimous. He was generous with his knowledge, his experience. He was happy to share. Um, the traits that people might find conflicting, but actually I sort of respect, they make sense to me actually, um, were related to his money and material possessions. Now, he was a real gatherer, shall we say, of things. Um, and he wasn't one to throw it away, would be the best way to describe it. But he wasn't mean either, you know? So, some people are mean with money. Um, Stan was still generous, so although he was a retailer, he would actually not mark the product up with as much profit as other places, if you know what I mean. He still made a profit, but he wasn't greedy and exploitative. Actually, that's a really good description. And I think what might have surprised a few people with him was um, that people kind of expected, because he clearly was doing well financially, that he should um, help other people financially, that perhaps he should give money away or he should do X and Y, you know, that whole business of people placing their expectations upon them. Whereas for him, he was absolutely adamant. He was like, no, he was a real believer in that business of you know teach a person to fish and they can fish for themselves you don't have to give away your fish you just need to give people the means and facility to be able to do their own fishing and let them catch it themselves so this is where stan was really good for me he taught me so much and if he didn't teach me directly himself he gave me the opportunity to learn and grow simply by being my friend and being in the right place at the right time stan did he created a community for people a place for us to gather he was a retailer of crystals but we all would go up there, not just buy crystals, but we would all go there and catch up with each other and, and do, you know, this is why my videos are called yarning on a Sunday. We would have a yarn, we would have a yap and a chat and we would talk about our experiences um, of using crystals or other people, you know, just we would share the knowledge and the learning. And um, that was a growth opportunity. When I was there, if he was busy, because sometimes, you know, what it's like in any business, you'd get more than one customer rock up at a time. And uh, quite often I would help him out in his store because at the end of the day, I actually used to go and spend a lot of time at his property. This was before he um, got his new relationship happening. And in that process, this is where I got a lot of my knowledge from crystals from was actually through being around Stan and talking to him and where he would teach me about the buying and selling of crystals because he would be importing them and i was retailing at fairs at the time and in fact if i recall correctly i probably met stan as a supplier of crystals for me taking crystals to fairs but i lived out of town so when i say i used to stay at his place a lot i would actually drive into town because he had a big house you know obviously wasn't short of a quid um, I would get to stay at the property. What a luxury and blessing that was as well. And then I might stay the weekend. And if I was there, well, you know, you've got to do something, which would take me into the shops a lot more. And this is where, you know, there is that energetic balance of, you know, you help one another, you do something with somebody, and then there ends up being a spin off um, bonus or blessing that comes through. And so I guess in many ways, we both helped each other out in different formats. I have to speed this up because this video is getting really long. But anyway, so talking about gifts, you know, and blessings and reciprocity, if I can think of it, it's not actually something calculated. It's just something ha that happens when we're following the guidance of our heart. Now, at the time I met Stan, we both needed a little bit of help and support. Um, emotionally which we both gave to each other we were just really good friends to each other um but one of the other things the the hidden blessing i guess or the hidden gifts of our friendship was that we helped to grow each other we i would say the expansion of the soul um, I knew about numerology before I met Stan. I'd been studying numerology for a number of years and I was into Pythagorean 
numerology, whereas Stan was into Charlian. And so what would happen is that um, when people would come into the shop or whatever, quite often, because Stan was also a healer and a psychic and he was able to see auras. And um, I think in some ways we would call him a diagnostic. He could see where there were um, blocks in a person's aura and be able to assist them to identify the cause. So anyway, you start to notice observations. When you're seeing a lot of people coming in and out of doors, you start to make links, which is that person has got these things. Um, there's numerology, there's a predisposition, there's a star sign, there's all of this stuff. So either way, where I'm going with this is we grew ourselves together. We grew our own understanding of lots of different things. Um, I probably learned a lot more from Stan than Stan learned from me. Stan had been doing his business for a long, long time. And this is why I want to honour him today, that he's always going to have a special place in my heart. He was a beautiful soul. I'm not sure that he actually realised, I mean, he had a great sense of humour. If you turned around, if he was alive and you turned around and said to him, you've got a beautiful soul, he'd go, I know, I shine, right? But he might say that, but I don't know that he actually really realised the depth of his own inner beauty. Now, this is a thing with being um, psychic or being able to see spirit and this kind of thing. When, when we are trying to contact or connect with somebody that we've known in this physical life and we're attached to the outcome, we can doubt what we see. Um, anyway, so this is why I'm saying... I honestly am not sure if I actually did manage to see and communicate with him since he passed. Um, I have felt that I've known for many months that he had passed uh, long before he had passed. I just hadn't, um, long before he had passed, long before I became aware on a conscious level where I've received the confirmation. Um, because he, I, I wouldn't say, if we say intrude, it makes it sound like it's unwelcome and uninvited. But I would say I have had intrusive energy from him that because he's, I've been thinking about him so much. Um, but anyway, once I've learned that he's passed, I have actually tried to connect with him. And I do feel that, um, that I did connect with him. But as I say, I can't be 100% sure. But I do know that the connection that I felt that I got with him was you know normally when we think about somebody passing that we loved and cared about then we can get a bit emotional and sad whereas what i felt was that actually it was pure joy um stan was well on his path before he passed over and um so there is like a celebratory energy with him where it's almost joyful um and and laughter you know, it's like, yay, you know, I'm free, I'm here, I made it. You know, there's this whole celebration of life, you know. So the energy that I got was that it felt like he'd gone home. So where I'm going with this is my own emotional response is a little bizarre, I guess, is I'm, I'm just so incredibly grateful that I managed to know him in this life, in this lifetime. And I feel doubly blessed. I feel like when my time comes at the divine time, that I've got another amazing person to be able to catch up with um, in unrestricted ways. Probably a little bit deep and a little bit out there for you. Um, but yeah, today I just feel very grateful and blessed to have had him in my life. And I guess from there, the next thing would to be to remind people that you know, we live in a time that everybody's reacting about small offences, small slights. Everybody gets so upset about um, the smallest of things. And there's an amazing book out there. I haven't picked it up for many years, but it might be worth mentioning it called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. You know, I used to say that quite regularly in the course of the days. You know, it, look, when somebody gets upset, is the world going to come to a screaming halt if this doesn't happen the way that you want it to? You know, okay, no, life goes on. So therefore, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. You know, pick your battles. Pick the things that you want to get passionate about or to get upset about because otherwise it's just a waste of energy and time. And the other thing is too that 
you know, I was just thinking about, you know, this liberation and freedom um, from the body at the divine time. It must be acknowledged that from where I sit, this is about divine planning as well, divine time. Life is hard. Life does have challenges. Life does have battles, you know, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, really. And um, it is just about going through life. In fact, actually, now we're going full cycle. We're going back to Faneuil. It's about hope, holding on to the hope and the faith and belief that these experiences that we're traveling through, that it's taking us down a pathway to greater expansion of our soul, um, to more positive experiences. There is this belief that when one door closes another one opens and there's another quote there actually that you know there is no such thing as loss in the oh what is the word in the course of the universal workings or whatever you know nothing will be lost because it will always be found and if you don't get back what you had you get back better or whatever i might not have clarified that properly but either way um, if you can think of what it is that I'm trying to say, please do feel free to, to make your comments. You can even make a joke at me, honestly. I've got a pretty good sense of humour about myself. I think I need to sometimes because I think I'm a bit of a joke sometimes as well. Um, anyway, okay, moving on now to a channel update. I just had to take a little break. Sorry about that. Anyway, to update you on what's happening with the Crystal Playlist, I am madly working on it still. I've got about 35 templates um, that I've prepped um, and this is a drop in the ocean because there's a real lot of them so I'm being very systematic about how I approach it doing the templates first and then doing the transcripts and then working on the audio um, and then I'll publish them more so as I feel drawn as opposed to any alpha system or anything like that there's not going to be any rhyme nor reason to my method of publishing unless there's a specific crystal that somebody wants to know more about or somebody wants to see a video go up about um, i'll take my lead from you guys let me know so i was just thinking um, when i took that little five minutes that um, i was thinking actually about mr nobody again and i should have mentioned on the slide that i've got a couple of suggestions when i was talking about children and angels the first thing is i think it's no um, accident or coincidence that the child has named fanuel as being the angel and this has promoted Mr Nobody to go and look up um, information about Faneuil the angel uh, because his function is hope and Mr Nobody has said in his comments that he's battling some real situations at the moment that are probably causing him to struggle with holding on to faith. Now my initial thoughts as I was having that five minute break was actually to recommend something like the yellow and red Labradorite, I thought, to actually help him with hope if he was going to be working with crystals. And I still actually think that, or fire opal or something like that, something that carries the hues of the yellow and the orange. But then, of course, when we talk about heartbreak, then we're talking about an emerald green type colour would be really good to help heal that as well, you know, the heartbreak. Um, and then anyway, so where I'm going, because I have a progression of thoughts, it suddenly struck me. I thought blue kyanite and how coincidental that I've got it on this slide and I'm revisiting it because this has been loaded this week. So, you know, blue kyanite actually fortunately is not terribly expensive and I don't think it's got um, a real high risk with buying it online. If you can't get into a crystal shop and personally handle one, you can't go wrong really. I mean, every now and again, you might see a bit of a dodgy coloured uh, kyanite where it's not particularly blue I would be going for the blue blue okay so just something like this slide here this will actually bring peace and clear the channels it'll blast the the um, central column of your chakras and auras and bring peace to you and help um, to build and maintain faith kind of indirectly because it's a chakra balancer so that might be a good one for you mr. nobody this week you will have seen on the channel as well on the playlist um moonstone has gone up um which is often confused with uh white labranorite and um so basically the video is directed more at rainbow moonstone but sometimes differentiating the crystals one from the other 
is quite difficult. But when you've got such similarities between crystals, such as the white labradorite and um, rainbow moonstone, they both basically have very similar healing properties anyway. Um, so I've bought what I thought was moonstone, which turned out to be white labradorite, I'm fairly sure now. Um, and then I've got some other pieces of the genuine article of the moonstone. And either way, they are all wonderfully lovely, calming, and I would say actually delicious. All right. Next week, you're going to see the hematite video published. That one's going to be published on the Tuesday. Just so you know, it's um, hematite for me is a really funny crystal in as far as um, I don't call it hematite. It just feels weird to me to call it hematite. To me, it's iron ore. Um, but I grew up in an area where it was basically iron ore lying on the ground. And of course, it was mined because it's that's why it's called ore. But when I look at pictures of hematite these days, um, this type of stuff, I look at this and I just think it's very high grade iron ore because, you know, but it's hematite. Um, but that's just what we knew it as. Um, and we had really, really good quality where I was growing up. The best quality I believe in the world at the time. The other thing that was abundant was actually tiger eye and tiger iron. I think we even had chrysoprase up there back in the day as well. I've decided to fast track the Red Garnet video as well. So this one's going to be loaded on Thursday. Um, there's t two types of, I'll call it Red Garnet, um, but Red Garnet is one of my favourite crystals because the clear type Red Garnet, which um, I have in a pendant form, I used to wear when I was going to university to study to help me focus and this kind of thing. Um, so obviously you've got that, that's referred to as red garnet. The one in the background that's more of a port wine colour with, um, I don't even know how to describe it, it almost looks like toffee really, just a, a deep red toffee if you've got it in front of you. That's actually called Armandine um, garnet and that is another one of my favourites. I absolutely love it and in fact I used to wear um, really big Armandine beaded bracelets for when I was doing work um, with say tarot or whatever I used to just put them on my wrists these days I tend to wear black tourmaline a lot of the time sometimes I might wear black obsidian depends on how I feel on the day really just as a little point of interest I thought I would mention um, this metaphysical meets physical stuff um, and what's your body trying to tell you I have actually applied this to my own life this week um, because I ended up with some oh, stabbing pain um, in my head, actually, at the base of my skull and top of my neck. And, um, oh, it was just causing me so much grief. It was almost becoming a migraine. So I did a bit of a Google and I suspected that what I had was neuralgia as a consequence of sitting at the computer for so long with poor posture, you know, which obviously that's got meaning in itself. But anyway, um, I decided that I would test the theory of wearing carnelian because that's supposed to be good for neuralgia or pain where um, something's hitting a nerve. Um, anyway, lo and behold, I will say it might be psychosomatic, you know, for the skeptics, or it might just be pure coincidence, but it might also be proof in an um, anecdotal evidence way uh, to support the properties because the healing properties of carnelian are said to be helpful for things like headache and neuralgia, which is why obviously I put it on and wore it. Um, anyway, what do you think? Do you think it was magical? I do know that most of the carnelian that I've got at the moment is that lighter orange, the really um, pretty, almost tangerine type colour, you know, um, of the segments, not of the peel. Um, but I actually have gone as far as buying myself a new carnelian pendant, which is on its way to me. And that one's more brown. So I'm actually quite excited about that, looking forward to getting it. So before I close out for the day, just a reminder that there's a number of playlists going now that um, you can go and blow your hair back with, go and have a look through them, um, see if there's anything that tickles your fancy. Uh, certainly when it comes to the numerology, probably even colour. My old Stan the Man was part of helping me develop my knowledge with that. So just acknowledging him again. 
So, my friends, if you've stayed through to this little close, I say thank you very much for being part of my journey and thank you for your commitment to yourself. Um, please feel free to make comments, feedback, whatever. Say hello. Just say good day if that's what you want to do. Um, I will look forward to catching you on the next video. Take care. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye for now.